The halls and archives of galleries like this one are filled with important artifacts and artwork. For the millions who visit museums each day, these treasures are key to understanding not only our culture, but the nature of curiosity itself. Yet while these institutions can help provide us with a big picture of our fellow human beings, they're not the only ones who are collecting. The Museum of Online Museums was created in 1999 as a home for lesser known collections of all kinds, from the locomotive horn sound file collection to the International Gallery of Fanta Bottle Caps. We began to ask ourselves, who are these collectors? Why do they collect? How do mere objects become objects of obsession? We invite you inside the Museum of Online Museums to meet just a few of these collectors, and perhaps get some insight into the collective mind. We begin by heading south to St. Louis, the gateway to the west. Here you'll find impressive archways, wonderfully terrifying children's museums, one of the nation's largest city parks, and delicious gooey butter cakes. But let's not get too distracted this early on and instead make our first stop. The museum. There are probably, I'd guess, four or 5,000 lists there. I'm Bill Kagey. I guess I'd call myself a designer and photographer um, and a collector, maker, and breaker of things. Based out of his home, Bill Kagey runs the grocery list collection perhaps the largest accumulation of found grocery lists in the world. The list collection started, it was probably 1997. I was leaving a grocery store, saw a slip of paper on the ground. It was a yellow post-it. There was nothing special, nothing unique, nothing actually interesting about it, except that it was once theirs and now it was mine. I just, I, I like um, projects and things that look at the details, the smaller things that are usually ignored. And so, Kegi decided to make the leap from curious to curator. The, the collection just kind of took off from there. I mean, I started finding more. Friends found them. Friends of friends found them. They would get passed along to me. People started emailing, asking where they could send their lists. From those few hundred lists, Kegi decided to launch his museum online at grocerylists.org. I set up a way for people to easily submit lists. People have just like jumped on and get really into Sending me, like finding them and sending me and pointing out which ones they think are awesome. Gin and candy for work. Yes, this whole bag here, packages from people. I think the first thing is it's voyeurism probably. It's a peek into people's lives. This one uh, just has sponges, jammer jelly, alcohol, wine, and suppositories. In its few short years, grocerylists.org has gathered more than 4,000 lists from across the world. Iowa. California, Indiana, New York, Each of which Kiki catalogs by hand. Every list gets counted and scanned and will end up on the site someday. There, there's no like editing. I just scan them all in and a hundred to a page and you click on the thumbnails and page through in the same way that I've got it when I open these envelopes. Over the years, he's become something of an expert profiler. Looking at all these lists at so many over the years, I think I've figured out what they mean. If, if it's annotated, like what aisle something's in, I think it's a list for a husband from a wife because he doesn't know where to find things. If it's kind of shaky handwriting, it's probably an older person, especially if it says cakes and cookies. Some of them, just the contents, you know, you can read into the, the, the life, I think, you know, whether it's um, a lot of uh, misspellings or obviously unhealthy selection of food. Unexpectedly, Keggy's expertise, his diligence, and his museum's popularity led the project in a new direction. A publisher contacted me and said, do you want to make turn this into a book? Uh, which was totally out of the blue. You know, stuff for the juicer, vitamins, granola, organic veggies. Um, and then, in, then, then at the bottom, tush cleaner. It ended up being called Milk Eggs Vodka, Grocery List Lost and Found. And um, it's basically the best, the worst, the saddest, the funniest, the weirdest, one of the funnier ones. <laughs> Um, they're getting beer, meaning that um, they're getting Bud Light and they're also getting good beer. We're not having tacos tonight, we're having togas, toga shells. 
One of the really nice things about a collection like this and, and putting it online is that uh, you don't have to take care of it. I mean, all these lists just end up in, in this bag or in boxes. For having 5,000 or so of something, it's a pretty small uh, investment in space. This person was so proud and happy. All it had on it was um, AAA batteries and lube. You know, I have more lists than I can post at, at this moment, and I suppose that's a good problem to have. Um, just knowing that the project is kind of continuing and branching out and not just staying the same exact thing um, is, is, is satisfying and, and keeps it fun.